we also had the idea to, uh, that we'd like to go and sequence um, Ebola in West Africa, and we actually started trying to plan this last year. But the um, original idea was that we would do that through the uh, British military via their, their Ebola treatment centre in Sierra Leone. And uh, after about three months or four months of delays, we eventually end up meeting Miles. And then from that point, about two weeks later, I was actually there. So it, it all moved extremely fast uh, as, soon as, we, as soon as we met Miles. And we were very grateful for the opportunity. Nick mentioned yesterday that I almost lost my mind when I was trying to prepare for this trip. And that was partly because I, didn't, I had an awful lot of stuff to, to, to prepare and pack but also because I had, to, um, I had to have a medical and I had to have six vaccinations all in the space of a week and uh, try, and make it, try and make it there. So this was my list that I wrote um, for my, to, in order to pack for the trip. We had done some validation at DSTL um, well, with, uh, with Simon, uh, Jamie and Phil, who are, uh, Phil, uh, Phil and Jamie are here today. In, that, in those uh, early validation experiments, we, um, we tested a couple of methods, uh, direct RNA sequencing, um, and uh, a PCR amplification method like the, the, the Thomas described. <clears throat> we had some, some, some early, we had some quite good success with the, ampl uh, with the Amplicon method, but the, uh, the RNA that we were, that we were using in the, for, the, for the test was, was quite degraded and we were only able to amplify small 500 base pair products. When I was packing for this, I was trying to, to make sure I had everything um, to do multiple uh, min iron library preps I actually took stuff to do the uh, low input, the standard uh, Amplicon, and direct RNA. So trying to remember everything was you know, a bit of a challenge. Um, this is my stuff that I took, this, this taken at the airport in Heathrow. So I had the PCR machine in the, in the, um, in the Pelican case. Um, the uh, hold all contained all of the cold chain reagents in kind of polystyrene cubes, and, uh, and had to take all the tips and tubes that I would need for the whole trip and be completely self-sufficient. The backpack's just my clothes, so that, that, in theory, you wouldn't need that, I guess. <laughs> Uh, this uh, arrived in, in Conakry, and this is the Donker Hospital where we, where, we, where, we, where we set up shop. This is the um, National Hospital of, of Guinea, and uh, it's pretty basic. You know, there are very, very little facilities there. It doesn't really have reliable water or power or anything like that. But we had a, a pretty nice lab that Mars has got set up there, recently renovated. So I got, a, uh, I got my stuff set up on a desk and, and started uh, about uh, validating the, the protocol. So when I got there, quickly realized that the Amplicon protocol was going to be the way to go because the, we just needed the simplest possible method and we had no internet connection, reliable internet connection. Um, we just needed the, the uh, targeted approach would mean that all of the reads that we sequenced would be, uh, would be um, hitting the Ebola genome which would mean we wouldn't have to upload a lot of, a lot of uh, host, host, data, uh, host uh, reads. So, so we, I started doing a couple of experiments to try and determine what the maximum amplifiable size would be for the amplicons. So I used uh, the primer panel that we took and, and pushed the right-hand primer out uh, to increasing amplicon read lengths and found that I could quite reliably amplify 2,000 base pair amplicons from the, from the fresh RNA extracts that we had there. Actually managed to amplify a couple of 6,000 base pair products, so it was probably um, at the very kind of tail, high tail of what was, uh, what was available in the sample. So we went up, so, oh, this is, uh, this is the uh, first, first uh, run that we did out there. This is a, a Guinean doctor who, who's working with Mars on a vaccine trial, and Mars looking extremely kind of Smug there, and <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the uh, the the WHO uh, vest that they give you to wear there. It's a kind of uh, security uh, thing. You can, there's there's actually quite a lot of uh, civil unrest in Guinea because the uh, the incumbent uh, prime uh, the incumbent president Alpha Conde is uh, delaying the general elections because of the Ebola um, response. So. Uh, at least once a week there would be, um, you know, some kind of uh, disruptions uh, and rioting, things like that. So they give you, they give you these jackets to try, and see, to try and keep you a bit safe. So that was the first run. Um, this is the kind of art shot that I did, showing the, uh, showing, showing the minnow in here with some, some sequences in the background. Um, all of our sequences are named after barbecue uh, dishes because Nick's a barbecue fanatic. This one's called uh, Ribs. 
So <laughs> first, first sequence there. <laughs> so the, 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 uh, the, the initial runs that we did, I uploaded the data via the hotel Wi-Fi where we're staying. This is the really nice plush hotel, the Palm Camayen in Conakry. And we were able to upload on their Wi-Fi connection at a reasonable speed, about two or 300k a second. And uh, what we decided that was a, a, a kind of sensible compromise was that I would take the first 5,000 reads of the run and upload them. And that gave you a file size of a uh, raw fast five file size, about 400 megabyte, uh, megabytes, which I could upload in about one hour per sample. Later on, we managed to get hold of this um, 3G hotspot from the WHO. And what we d actually did was went around and bought SIM cards off the street and tested them out. Um, in, in order to get a 10, 10 gigabyte data bundle, we had to buy 17 top-up cards <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and put them all on individually. But in the end, we found this network, MTN, it's a South African network, which would get equivalent speed to the uh, hotel Wi-Fi. And we tested this in, uh, Sophie tested this in Koya as well, out, out, uh, outside the capital city, and was able to get a decent upload speed there too. So this is just an example showing a few of our, a few of our uh, early Amplicon um, strategies. So the first one we did at the top here is the support and down method, where we uh, the validation uh, data set where we used a 500 base pair amplicons. This was our first one um, in Guinea. I wasn't being too ambitious, so I did um, one one kilobase amplicons there. Um, we noticed that there was a, a small gap here, and at the end, which was a problem with the primers. So in the later versions, uh, we refined it until we finally got 98.5% um, of the genome covered. Uh, Properly, properly, and continued using that using that uh, that that scheme for the rest of the for the rest of the trip. This is, a, uh, this is an example uh, showing the first kind of six genomes that we did, um, uploading, uh, as I said, about 5,000 reads, sometimes sometimes more, um, which gave us you know very high mean coverage uh, in the in the hundreds of x. Um, <coughs> The, pass, the percent passing reads was quite important because obviously we wanted to upload as, uh, as, as few non-passing reads as possible. Um, the best we got was up to 70%, which was where I started with a very high input and then um, so, so essentially had one microgram going into the ligation step. And the mismatch rate you can see in, in a lot of cases was, was less than 10%. So we got some pretty uh, tasty alignments using um, a margin align. Um, from, from Mitten and uh, Mark. And uh, you can see pretty, pretty easy to call SNPs using this data. So we, we, uh, w in, in the background of all this, Nick was actually uh, working up a, a SNP calling pipeline for, 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 these, uh, for, the, for these viral genotyping. And uh, we actually, he actually decided uh, to use uh, margin align, uh, then margin caller, and then he... Uh, tags the read depth into the VCF file and then pulls out a consensus based on uh, the probability of the SNP and the depth. Then we put all these, this is a tree from uh, Georgios uh, in Liverpool. He put, he, we put, he put all of the, uh, four, this is, about f I did 14 sequences, 14 sequences into uh, a tree and we showed that there was, uh, that there's currently two lineages circulating in Guinea which wasn't known. Um, this one here is, is very close to the origin, is close to the index case, the, the, G, the GN1 lineage, which Miles showed. This one uh, is, you know, is, is distantly related, um, and is is more related to the, uh, to the to the Sierra Leone strain. So, this was basically the workflow that we used. Um, we did RT-PCR quantification and pooling of the amplicons, and then the standard um, oxo nanopore prep, min ion sequencing. Uploaded the. Um, I made a. I, bet I compressed the the, re, the 5,000 reads into a tarball and uploaded them either via the Wi-Fi or 3G. Um, when we got when uh, when the data was available, Nick downloaded it and ran Metric Core, um, margin align, margin caller, manually inspected the uh, the the SNPs, generated a consensus, and then generated a tree. And we were able to return that data back to the um, to the coordinating team. Um, in the Ebola response, um, in one case within 48 hours um, after the patient was bled. So, this is a plot showing the collector's curve for a, a, a selection of the runs. You can see that I only ever ran the instrument for a maximum of an hour, and we were able to generate 
the, hundred of, the hundreds of X coverage that we need. Some of them, um, some of them were generating uh, reads fast, at a faster rate than some of the others. It's pretty much related to the library concentration. All of the flow cells that I took were, were, were extremely good uh, at QC. And um, I did test running Metricore on the 3G connection and was able to base call 5,000 reads in about a uh, little over an hour. So it probably, uh, this was just kind of to, to see whether it would be possible to run the pipeline uh, actually out there, just package it up and run it on the laptops for, for, for a really rapid turnaround. So that would be possible. And the really good news is that the WHO were, uh, saw the value in this work and they, um, they wanted it to continue. So they've supported, um, thanks to uh, some hard work from Miles, to get this hut built here which was designed to be separate from the diagnostic um, to facility to, to, uh, to, pr to protect against amplicon contamination. So they built this hut. It says no photos. I, hope, I don't know why. Is it OK to show this? <laughs> and this is the inside. So we've got some kind of typical office desk and a fridge. Um, and th this was taken yesterday. And Sophie managed to uh, force four, four genomes yesterday. So this is ongoing work. And. Um, these are all of our uh, collaborators and acknowledgements, and uh, this one in particular here. <laughs> so, thanks very much.